Well, welcome to this latest episode of Journalists in Chairs Drinking Wine. I'm delighted to have with me today Madeline Lim. Madeline is Senior Executive Editor at Bloomberg News, uh, responsible for, for much of Asia. Uh, Madeline, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Great. We're glad to have you. Well, I, we have a nice bottle of wine uh, for us indeed. today. Madeline did tell me earlier that she didn't want to imbibe too much. She's very responsible, very conscientious. But I would, I would like to, to describe a little bit of what we're drinking today. This is a Croze Hermitage from, from Rhone. Um, should be pretty good. But Madeline, if you would do the honors and, and tell us what you think. It's okay, quite I will. ruby color. Look at, look at the color. Mm. Amazing. And nicely, nicely cool. Because we try. A, we try. It's a it's a myth that you should not drink red wine cold. It's true. True. Mm -mm. Mm, very nice. Excellent. It's got the, a round, the, nice flavor. Good. 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 Well, I'll I'll, nice I'll top you up there. Um, now, I'm sure all of our viewers know what Bloomberg is, but they probably don't know the scale of the organization. I mean, how, how many people do you have in Asia and, and, and how many places? So it's um, roughly 22 bureaus. Just in okay, Asia? Just in Asia. Wow. Well, some of them are one-person bureaus. You okay. know, they're not like all, uh, the big hubs are Singapore, obviously Tokyo mm -hmm. is a bit big, um, so is uh, Hong Kong, obviously. So those are the big hubs. Sydney is quite significant, but um, yeah, we have a we have a fair amount of bureaus. We're opening hopefully two new bureaus this year: one in Shenzhen and one in um, in Vietnam in Hanoi. Wow! So that'd wow. be in Ho Chi Minh City. Sorry, and so okay. that'll be exciting. Fantastic! Um, once this whole thing calms down and goes away, <sighs> we're Fingers roughly <laughs> six, we're a little bit over six hundred and something twenty-five people. So um, reporters, editors. Um, and also uh, analysts and research, so that's the entire world under our editor-in-chief who also oversees John Micklewaite, who also oversees um, not just print, what we know as Bloomberg, but also television, reports into him, as does um, Bloomberg Economics, Bloomberg Intelligence, which is our sort of research and analytics arm, and uh, Quick Takes. So you've you mentioned all these different things. I mean, it's, when you say Bloomberg News, it's not just business and financial news. You've got all these other components, Bloomberg Intelligence. I mean, what, give us an idea of the scale of content if you can so you get every we're basically a one-stop shop and that's our selling point right you can get if you are in financial market participant you will get the news that you need the headlines that you need to trade you will get the longer stories you'll get the interviews you get the scoops but we also offer you um, which you know more and more banks are pulling back on we offer you industry analysis we offer you company analysis we offer a lot of uh, asset class analysis so credit is big. We're building out our, our Asia credit offering, um, FX rates. You know, we have all that. Um, we have an economics research arm. It's a small team. It's not. It's not particularly big, but they do a lot of very unique research. Um, you know, so whether it's indicator forecasts or longer term trend analysis, um, we have that all. And then you get the television arm as well. And you get um, our new offering, our newest offering in the video, um, and obviously the webs, uh, but our newest offering is going to be pr coming pretty soon is uh, OTT television, um, okay. where we, we are building out. I don't know whether what people might. What does OTT might, television stand, it's, what does it's, it's, stand for? It stands it? over, over the over the top. Top. Some. Oh, OK, OK. So all right. all right. So this is something that you can view it at home on your television screen with a or special? It's just longer segments, oh, okay, in, cool. uh, well. which you will be able to view on. Um, on, I think, on your TV if you want, but okay. I think you can also view it on your mobile on and your on the web. And, and so this sounds devices. like you're broadening your audience a bit beyond your core financial professionals. Right. It's sort of enhancing that whole okay. um, offering. And it's built out of the success of our quick takes, which are the very short videos mm -hmm. that we do on mm -hmm. the web, on, on Twitter. Um, it's built and out of that into something bigger. Okay. Now, Bloomberg was one of the first news organizations to uh, say, you know, everybody in Asia should be working from home. And as far as I can recall, it was really the, the first news organization to do this on such a big scale. Um, how does that work? I mean, journalists, because I always nag my students, right? Go out there, talk to people, get the detail, use your senses. I mean, how are your reporters coping when they're at home and not able to actually see people, people in, yeah. in, in real life? It's a really good question. And, you know, we have some bureaus that um, have been working from home. This is week nine of working from home. So that's a very long time. Yeah. And, I, and initially, when we, when we shot basically China and Hong Kong, um, the offices, that came overnight, so it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't planned. So, you know, a lot of people were first shell-shocked and then realized, oh, I don't have this and I don't have that and mm -hmm. I don't have the other. It's a mad scramble. Then we all settled down, but nobody has ever worked 
when you work from home, you think of an afternoon because you have to wait for the plumber to come, right? You don't think of nine weeks. So it's been a constant experiment. You know, you all of a sudden realize, wait, I don't, I'm, I'm sitting at my kitchen table on my kitchen chair. This is, this is not sustainable, right? right? And so you have to kind of adapt and you have to, it's constantly changing. I think difficult things or challenges that have arisen are, Number one, you do feel over time a little bit isolated. Yeah. You know, initially it's like, great, I'm productive, I get my stuff done. Yeah. And everybody was in the same boat, right? Our, our sources were also working from home or stuck from vacation and couldn't get back. And there was, it was quite mayhem. So a lot of people were WhatsApping or IBing. You know, everybody was kind of in the same boat. Over time, you start feeling, I can talk to my sources, I can pick up the phone, I can, you know, talk to them, I can even go out and see them, keeping, social you know, distancing, social distancing. Yes. <laughs> but where are my, my colleagues like you know yeah. the the creative spark that you get from an occasional turning around and going like hey what do you think that you miss that well, and that's, that's so what people that's say. so true and that's honestly one of the things i miss about not being in a, in a newsroom is that that constant source of information that your colleagues represent right and you know it happens here in the halls of elliot hall where you know we run into colleagues and just through a, a chat about something random, we get ideas that inform the curriculum right. and things to do with the students. Mm -hmm. And you know, that to me is, is the worst thing about, about being isolated in this way. And for us, there's also a production angle to it. So it's really hard if you're sending competitive headlines. Yeah. You know, normally it's like, can you come over, look over my shoulder, news is breaking, yep. do, I have, yep. do I have a stupid yep. typo here? Yeah. You know, you don't have that anymore. Now yeah. we have tools at our disposal. Luckily we have the terminal and there's all little tools that we can communicate with each other. But it's just another step. So yeah. I, I do feel that it has had an impact. There's a sort of a, a mental health, if you want, impact, but also, productivity and we've had to say to people you we will not measure you you know like performance goals never mind performance goals like we understand something that used to take you two hours you know chase down a source confirm something somebody a people mover one of those things right, right. pretty simple done very quickly now can take an afternoon just because you know people don't always answer their phones they don't always look at the email they don't always answer their whatsapps you know it's it's really hard um, and, and you, you mentioned the terminal, and you know, the Bloomberg terminal is really at the heart of Bloomberg News. Uh, it, every reporter uses it constantly. It, it, that seems like it might be a great advantage for Bloomberg reporters having the terminal. That maybe tell us a little bit about how your reporters use the terminal in their reporting. So we, you use it in many different ways. Like number one, obviously, as a place to um, gather for, for data gathering. Like that's one good way to look. Um, we you can obviously look up individuals. You can, you know, you can. For example, we have a function that lets you see who holds how much in which company, and then you can kind of break it down into you know which firm, and, and you can find the portfolio manager who manages the fund. So that is a good way to access information. If you're sort of starting out reporting on a company, you don't really know. You know, and then you can do the other things that everybody else is, which is see who are the popular, who gets quoted a lot in the press, but that's one way you can mm. get in. We have a note function that attaches to the person where you can kind of go in and see, oh, here are some tips that people, you know, people say, oh, you know. So there's a like reporter's shared. notebook function built into the terminal? For the reporters, yes. Okay, and, and, and the reporters all see this? You can share, right. I wonder what they say about me. Shall I look you up? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Hopefully, I'm not even in there. I, mean, I try to keep a very low profile. You know, I, I don't like talking to journalists, really. You know, no, no. Is, no, no. Why would you? Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Why would you? Oh, anyway, wait, the wine. Cheers. Oh, cheers. See, yes. this happens cheers. every time. Cheers, cheers, every cheers. time we do this. Well, it's a good conversation. Oh, good. Cheers. Cheers, Thank everybody. You for cheers. cheers, everybody. This is a virtual happy hour. So, um, we mm. we did one of these. Uh, you know, some of our teams do these, uh, talking about work from home. Um, some of our teams do this. They have little virtual happy hours. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yep. I mean, I, I tell you, I, yeah, that it also, don't you worry about them becoming alcoholics, drinking all day long? <laughs> journalists. <laughs> journalists. Journalists. It is um, good, though. Well, what, uh, what do you, advice do you have you know, for, for maybe our, our students? Because I know they're frustrated as well. They're having to work from home. They're trying to be journalists from home. I mean, besides, I don't want to encourage them to drink, uh, of course. Uh, no, we don't. Too much, too no, much. No, but, no, 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 no. I mean, do you have any advice for them on how to kind of keep sane in, in this? Various things that you have to be careful about, right? So the f keeping sane entails being kind to yourself and you know taking care of yourself. I do think that's important. Whether it's not feeling that you always have to sit at your desk and be present, um, yeah. don't. You have to exercise. You know, like just and turn off. 
that's really hard. That's the hardest thing to do right now with all this news breaking. It's the hardest thing to do is to turn off, right? I mean, but you especially have to. for journalists. Yeah. I, mean, I, I still have it in, in, in my blood, and I still yeah. have that habit every morning. I wake up and read in. Yeah. And uh, boy, it's it's depressing every every morning reading in. But yeah. You just yeah. got to kind of shut off. I'm, I'm I'm now reading several novels. Yes. At the same time, which which is a tremendous help. Um, yep. So that's great. Um, yep. Yeah. I got Wolf Hole. Uh, the, oh. No, not Wolf Hole. The successor. Um, the, the, mirror, the, um, the mirror. The mirror and, and, uh, and the and the light. Yes. I, I'm, I'm 200 pages in. Oh, don't tell it's, me. It's fantastic. I've only started. It is so good. Um, if you if you haven't if you haven't read this book, it's it's a trilogy by Hilary Mantel. It is amazing. It's about. Um, um, uh, it's Henry the Eighth and Thomas Cromwell. Yeah, Thomas Cromwell, right. yeah. yeah. And um, you know, the, who was kind of basically seen as the guy pulling the threads, right, yeah. and doing what the king needed to do, but also kind of very much kind of um, kind of managing stuff around. So it's a, it's a interesting, you know, and sort of organizing all these different wives situations. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but I do want to get back you know. to it's oh, a yeah, power story. I do want to get back to what I. Mm. So I thought about this because. Um, Jeff kindly warned me that he would ask this because it is a really difficult situation. And mm. I would say the one thing that I can think of right now is to think about how you use social media and what your mm. social media profile is and what you're writing about. What are you really interested in? Who do you follow? Where can you start, you know, whether it's retweets, retweets with comments, like start to kind of um, insert yourself a little bit into the conversation. Now you have to do it carefully, obviously, but, but um, that would be one way um, you can also DM people, right, and sort right. of maybe start right. conversations that way. Um, just reach out. I think you will probably find that there are people, people, some people won't bother, but some people will be open to having a conversation because everybody is in the same boat very mm. much. And we're yeah. all very much aware that the way we had been doing things is going to change. And we have a very active conversation. So the Hong Kong Bureau in general, so the Hong Kong office, I should say, for Bloomberg, which includes our salespeople and our, you know, and our data people and everybody, we have a very active conversation about what the future of work is, which sounds mm. like a very ponderous topic, but it's not. It's, we're trying to be practical and to think through what this means for everybody as a, as a community. You know, in a way, it, it could be an advantage to being a reporter now because so many people want to talk want to talk and, and want information. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is incredible. Our readership has just soared. And if it's for us, it's for everybody else, right? Yeah. Whether it's the web or on the terminal or any other products, our viewership, like everybody wants news. And so it's really interesting. Um, so it's a good time to be a journalist. You're, we're at this, all these pivotal points, you know, China in the world. Yeah. I've never, like, I was a reporter during 2008. But I've, even then, the global economy did not entirely fully slam on the brakes everybody together right now. Yeah. And I've never seen something like this before. So, you know, I think there's, it's a great time, and I know you're doing economics right now and economic policy. Dream time to do that. It is, it is in many ways. There's a lot of, lot of fodder uh, yeah, for the lot classroom of fodder, discussions. Right, right. Um, but it's such a big story. I mean, it, it affects literally every aspect of our lives. Every industry is affected. I mean, how do you cover this as a story? How do you parcel it out to your reporters? And how do you ensure that all the important angles are covered? So we take the lens of, um, well, as you know, we are the chroniclers of capitalism. <laughs> you are allowed to laugh. <laughs> but that's what it says in the Bloomberg way, which is available on Amazon. No Highly recommended. Highly recommended. <laughs> but it does say we are the chroniclers of capitalism. So but what we want to be is the premier business and finance uh, reporters, right? So you take that lens to every story. You're not going to find us do general news stories. And we didn't, if you look at the stories that we did during the, um, initially at the start of the year when it was Corona was kind of contained to China, right? I would say for the coronavirus story, we have done more, veered a little bit more into the general news angle than we normally would, but it's a pretty solid, you can see how we differ from the New York Times, for example, or the Guardian, you know. Um, so that's one of the angles. That's what you, how you kind of limit it. You always ask, so what is the business and finance angle? What's the Bloomberg angle? Some, some things are really easy. It's, you know, if it has a direct impact on a market or a group of shareholders or something like that, it's very easy to find that lens. Sometimes it's harder. Do you write about? Uh, but a lot of it is right now ties into the whole China-US relationship, right? So much of that ties to, is tied to that. Um, equally, it ties into how, you know, managing um, a viral outbreak 
is something that economy is, is a macroeconomic story now, right? So it has always has that angle. You just have to find it and think about it. Um, what aspect of your coverage or what story in, or in the coronavirus or about the coronavirus has been your favorite that you guys have done? Oh, we've done so many. Yeah, don't, know, make tough, I mean, <laughs> don't make me choose. Don't make me choose. And I don't want you to like have any of your reporters feel <laughs> left out too. Right. So. Exactly. I think. Look, what I've really enjoyed. So I think there's been some stellar coverage across the board by so many outlets. Mm. I I just think it's amazing how people have come up with charts, with visualization, with ways of representing the outbreak. Um, you know, all these translating some of these more complex sort of medical th thinking into sort of something that's accessible for um, even market participants, you know, like you need to kind of translate that. We, um, we did very early on, we have a reporter in um, Sydney uh, who has a degree in public health. And he very wow. early started writing about children and, you know, how children could be carriers. Mm -hmm. and that. Those were some of the things that I thought was were really interesting. Um, the way we covered the whole, you know, explaining to the rest of the world, which is we, which we do a lot, of, particularly to America, of you know the importance of the Lunar New Year holiday, and we had one story that said something like three billion travelers and and a virus or something like that, and sort of kind of tried to map out this is the scale of what you need to think about because it's very easy to say oh it's like Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's thanks you know it's a Thanksgiving road trip situation with a definite Chinese slant to it, right? In, in terms of the scale is even is much bigger because you're not talking a bit, 3 billion, you're talking 300 million on the road or whatever it is in the right, US, like right. 250 million. So yeah, so slightly to bring that home, that I thought was also great. I, um, I was quite fond, so this is, it, this is more sort of what we did on social media was some of our Beijing reporters would go went out you know and sort of just filmed what it was like outside and i thought that brought home really how different it was because they were working from home they were you know their offices were closed our offices were closed but hong kong was still you could still go out in the street you could go shopping you could and they went out and there was nothing or if they were even allowed out the door right i mean <laughs> so you know the kind of capturing those contrasts those also i thought brought home really the reality of what was going on yeah and it's, it's interesting how you know we're all reporters now are are you know having to become more expert in their topics you mentioned your reporter with a degree in public health i know you've got you've got a bunch of reporters who have cfas MBAs, um, but it's it's not just about the expertise. We have to explain it so that people will understand, relate it to the reader, uh, and we have to do it now with video as well. Like your report is on the streets of Beijing. It's yes. it's it's so different than when you are, you and I started. Uh, yes. In this when when you and I, I don't know what, but you know, like this did not exist when I started, YouTube and so it was you know it's yeah. incredibly it was just. I can't even imagine doing it now. Also, the pace was slower. Can I just say? Yes, that's that's so true. That's yeah. so true. Well, you know, your, your boss was in the news earlier this year. I I, I know. I, I have to ask you he about was? it. Mike Bloomberg was was <laughs> running for president in the United States. Um, he he's dropped out of the race. Does that make you happy or sad? So I have to say. So and just full disclosure. Um, you actually told me that you were going to ask this. Yes, question. That was very nice of you. So I had some time to think about it. Um, because I would have, if, you, if I had been surprised, I would have probably said, hmm, let's have a glass of wine. Let's just have a sip of wine. But, so I have to say, one of the things that I find amazing about um, the US political system is just how cumbersome it is. Mm. It is, you know, you, basically the sitting president in the last year of his presidency spends all his time focusing on getting reelected. He gets reelected. He spends... He, you know, he spends much of his time, he has some time in office, and then he has to spend time sort of, you know, doing, going on the road and campaigning for the senators and the Republicans for the, how, the congressional elections, right? So, so it's very cumbersome. But um, I have, and, and the other thing was that I thought that when I moved out here, I would be, I would not be that much exposed to the whole U.S. election cycle. And you know, initially I was because of, as you can imagine, we were all talking about it, yeah. right? And it was yeah. just like, how's this going to go? What's going to happen? Like there was a lot of like kind of nervousness in the newsroom. But then I think once once the virus outbreak happened, it was just, it just overtook everything. And as I said to you, when we walked in together, um, it doesn't seem to be the story anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It just isn't. I mean, so you're happy. You're um, sad. I have a great story to tell. <laughs> I live in the best city in the world, my opinion. And so I, you know, why would I not be happy? That's a wonderful question. Wow. You, you, you can be in PR you, you, and, and journalism. It's fantastic. Great answer. Um, 
I have to ask you another question. I, I did warn you I was going to ask you this one, too. But, you know, during the campaign, uh, Mike got a lot of uh, criticism uh, for comments that he made in the past about women. Um, and there was that kind of that book that was made by some of his colleagues you know, way back uh, 10 years ago that kind of circulated. But you know, I, I see Bloomberg, and, and I see you know, so many talented women in senior positions. I'm thinking you, of course, but you know, Jenny Paris, who, who I work with for many years. She's fantastic. Uh, Ross Matheson in Singapore, fantastic. So I mean, clearly, it's, it's a place that, that where women can thrive in senior positions. But you know, what's the disconnect there? I, I, I think the disconnect is in the three words that you used in the past. Mm. I do think that, you know, it's, and I'm not excusing anything. Um, all I would say is that the company has grown up and the company, you know, has become, become more mature and, and is more inclusive and really cares about people. I think it's changed. I think you could probably say that of any financial company, right? If you took any financial company and you sort of looked at how it's evolved, like we, we are part of the general society we're in and we can't thrive if we don't, you know, if we don't participate and if we don't care about the things that, our, that people we hire. We want to be an attractive place to work. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we want to be, and, and, we want, and we care about our people, so I think we have changed, and that would be the only answer I could give. I have to admit, I am, in terms of Bloomberg years, fairly young. I only joined in 2012. Um, so yes, so, so there are people who have been much longer at Bloomberg who probably bring a more historical perspective to this. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I have only been treated absolutely amazingly. I joined as a reporter. Seven years later, I sit in Hong Kong and I'm responsible for, you know, co-heading yeah. Asia coverage. I have to say, clearly there were no hurdles in my way. You yeah. know, clearly <laughs> I benefited a lot from people caring about, you know, sort of advancing people, helping people in their careers. I had a lot of massive, great mentors, both male and female. Um, one of, you know, Peter Grauer is one of my mentors. Mm. So, you know, I mean, I'm, a, I'm one of his mentees and, yeah, so I, I, can, I can't really, um, yeah, can't really help bridge that gap. Well, that's, that's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Now, for a lot of my students, you know, working at Bloomberg is probably their dream job. That's so um, nice of you to say that. And I'm happy that. to say that we do have a lot of graduates. You uh, do, working, including Fionn Lee. Yes, Fionn Lee, who yes. is our, uh, in our first graduating class of undergrads yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's now the Hong Kong bureau chief. Right, so, exactly. Um, and Deal's team leader for Asia, which is a oh, big job. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. um, it's it's great that, that that happens. But is there any kind of particular characteristics or skills or talents that you're looking for in, in new hires? Um, so I would say uh, what we're looking for is probably um, 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 an openness to doing many different things, mm. to not you know not being too obsessed with I want to be the tech reporter and I want to be the Bloomberg you know whatever consumer reporter. It's good to have interests and you shouldn't hide them. But when you come into a role, obviously you want to just be kind kind of open to what is out there. We typically um, try to. I think somebody joining Bloomberg should want to do finance and business news. Mm. Because that's a core, regardless of all the other things that we do, it's the core of our business. And if you want to advance and have a career with us, it's probably where you should be thinking. You know, so if you're really interested in fashion, think you, you know, you'd have to do it from that perspective. The right? business of fashion. The business of fashion, the business of sports. That's mm -hmm. how we look at things. So that's one thing to bear in mind. We obviously, I obviously look for people who are willing to. Um, who are open to automation, working with compute, like mm. uh, with with machine learning and things like that. That is just, you don't have to ha have Python programming knowledge, mm. although that's not a it's not a minus. Um, but you have to be open to that. So okay. it, it, a bit of like a bit of willingness to be. One of my questions that I ask is, um, would you be willing to think about training some training a bot to do half of the tedious part of your job? Is normally how I phrase it, right? The copy and pasting part and the collecting part, because mm -hmm. it sounds you know you could think of a bot as this cute little robot, but <laughs> actually it is a lot of kind of training the machine, and right. that means mm -hmm. a lot of you know accepting, rejecting, accepting, you know, like yes, no, yes, no answers to train the model, right? And so you have to be willing to do that kind of work as well. Um, but you, you don't tell me that the bots are going to replace the journalists. No, they're not. Okay, I am. My, the bots in my world are here to do tedious stuff, and we mm. have to. But we. But there is that element that you have to teach them. So I'll give you an example. We have this. Um, 
this program, this computer program that basically can go through pre-earning sta pre statements in, in the UK. So mm. they release, they give that, they call, they call them pre-earning statements and it's like either it's a signal that there's going to be a profit warning or a profit upgrade, right? And basically somebody on, on the breaking news team sat down and went through 6,000 documents to teach the machine, this is what a profit warning looks like and this is when it's a profit upgrade. Wow. And now the machine can just do a little, a little two-line story that says, and get it right, but you had to go, somebody had to spend time going through 6,000 documents. Wow. So that's the kind of investment I'm talking about. You have to be willing to do that. And kind if of stuff. it's done well, then that will free up reporters to yeah, do more Yeah, then you don't have to sit the there features. watching right. at 7 o'clock in the, in the morning. Oh, is right. all that stuff coming? That stuff coming in? And is there a company here who is really important? That's really important, and I need to do, um, I need to write this story, right? Mm -hmm. The computer does the first take for you, and you can actually, you know, go and have a cup of coffee and, you know, <laughs> I like blah, blah, like blah. The sound of that. <laughs> or, or a glass of wine. Or a glass um, of wine, indeed. So I, I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, okay. Madeline, thank you for joining us today. You're it's been a real welcome. pleasure. You're um, if, you, if you're watching us uh, live, stay, stay in your Zoom room. Uh, we will be opening up for questions in about two minutes. But Madeline, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've had such a good time. Me too. Me too. Guys, take care. Stay safe. And Bye. we'll see you again soon. Bye. See you bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye.